There's a lot of talk these days about gut health and your microbiome. That 70% of your entire immune system is in your gut, and that most, if not all, disease is a result of inflammation. In today's episode of The Wellness Connection, we're going to talk about fighting disease, functioning better, and feeling awesome. And it all starts with fiber. Keep watching. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark LeMay. Fiber. Important? Not important? Able to fight off disease? You're probably thinking, what's so great about fiber? Dr. LeMay, are you saying that fiber can save my life? I know, those are some pretty big statements. That's why I'm going to share with you way more information than you probably want. But it's important for you to understand what fiber is and how critical it is for you to get enough of it so that your body can function properly. So how much is enough? In traditional cultures, they would consume 100 to 150 grams of fiber daily. Yeah, you heard that right. 100 to 150 grams of fiber every day. The FDA recommends 30 plus grams for women and 40 plus gram for men daily. Want to know how much the average American is getting? Less than 15 grams per day. That's one reason our country is so sick, but more on that in a bit. First, we need to talk about the two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Think of it this way. Soluble fiber is like a cleaning sponge. It soaks up water and binds to cholesterol and glucose to clean it out of the body and prevent the spread of bad bacteria. Insoluble fiber is like a cord that's all knotted and tangled up. It's hard to break down or untangle. And it's not supposed to absorb water. Without both kinds of fiber, you're creating a recipe for disaster. In other words, disease. Now you know what fiber is and that you should probably consume more than 30 grams per day. I'm going to attach a PDF link in the description box below of a list of the top soluble and insoluble fiber foods. I encourage you to get your fiber from a farm, not a pharmacy. Now let's talk about how fiber protects you from disease. Most people think it's important to eat fiber because it helps you to have bigger and better poops, that it stabilizes your blood sugar, reduces cholesterol, makes your stomach feel fuller longer, reduces constipation and hemorrhoids. Yes, it does all those things, but there's something even more important that happens when you consume enough good fiber. Both types of fibers are complex plant sugars that are needed to produce short-chain fatty acids. Here are six benefits that short-chain fatty acids give you. Number one, Short-chain fatty acids are the energy source of your intestinal cells, kind of like electricity is the power source in your home. Number two, short-chain fatty acids help with the signaling of your hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin. Think of them as your on and off switch. Ghrelin tells you you're hungry and leptin tells you you're full, which over time results in decreased obesity. Number three, short chain fatty acids strengthens your gut barriers. Think of this as like a fence around your home. If you have a weakened fence, it can allow all kinds of bad things to get through. If your fence is strong, then you can fight off all kinds of invaders. Number four, short chain fatty acids suppress inflammation. Think of this as like the sprinkler system in your office building. It's there to suppress a fire. Inflammation is fire in the body. There are a ton of research studies that show inflammation to be the starting place of all disease. Number five, short chain fatty acids promote immune function and development. Remember, 70% of your entire immune system is in your gut. Think of your immune system as your personal army defending you against invaders. And number six, Short chain fatty acids nurture healthy gut bacteria. They work together as a team to prevent an overgrowth of bad bacteria, which leads to disease.
See what I mean about the importance of fiber and the bacterium that feed on the fiber to produce short chain fatty acids? Here are three action steps to help you get more fiber in your diet. Number one, print out the charts I included in the description box on the soluble and insoluble fiber foods. That will help you with the next step. Number two, for the next three days, track your intake of fiber using those charts. I don't want you to track calories or carbs, just the total grams of fiber every day. Add up your grams of fiber for three days and then divide it by three, and that will give you your average intake of fiber per day. Number three, once you have your daily average, increase it by five and that's your goal for the next seven days. For example, if you are eating 25 grams of fiber per day, you'll want to eat 30 grams of fiber every day for the next seven days. Then for the next week, add five more grams of fiber. We want to increase this slowly to allow your gut microbiome time to adjust. Adding too much fiber too fast will cause bloating and gas. Your goal is to get it to at least the FDA recommended levels. I told you that was a lot of information, but I hope you found that helpful. I'm sure you'll agree with me that fiber is a big key to good health. Be sure to like this video and to subscribe to our channel. And most importantly, share this video with someone who could benefit from this information. I'm Dr. Mark LeMay. Thanks for watching.